I haven't been the big social butterfly that I'm usually am in terms of going out raving every single day and partying and getting my face all sweaty and hugging strangers and then adding them onto Instagram and then trying to be their friend and all this malarkey. No, I'm not that pathetic anymore. I've kind of, I've kind of like chilled out with that sort of stuff. I've kind of brought it down a couple of levels and I'm chilling out and I'm having a good time. But as per usual, most of you would know, there are some parties happening actually this week that I'm actually looking forward to maybe checking out. I'm not going to lie. There are some parties happening this week that I am looking forward to checking out. And I want to just like, you know, see Wild Guan, see what the flipping lay of the land is and kind of go from there. One of them in particular being, um, I think, I think is it on Friday or something? Or maybe it's on Saturday. Let me just double check on my RA app actually here on my phone. I think it might be Friday. Actually, no, it's Friday. Yeah. Um, oh, it's actually, it's next Friday. It's not, is it this Friday? No, it is this Friday. It's this Friday. Um, Patrick Mason, the legendary Patrick Mason. I think most of you guys will know who Patrick Mason is. He's been quite well known on social media for the past, what, I guess a year or so for some of his extravagant um, out there and performances when it comes to being a real entertainer behind the booth. Um, he loves to dance. He loves to take his top off and display his rather svelte and ripped body and just generally be a big, you know, be a real big, a real party rock star DJS type of person behind the booth, but more so a performer, I'd say, right? I don't think he'd probably, I don't think he'd probably agree with the thought of party rock star sort of like moniker. I think I've heard somebody, or maybe I'm the one that said that he was like the DJ Iggy Pop. And I don't really think he took that too well. So maybe he doesn't see himself that way, but I'm a big fan of him just as in terms of a DJ visually, what he represents. I also love the fact that he came up during the pandemic it kind of felt like i kind of discovered patrick mason during the pandemic so it's been quite cool to see him basically evolve um over the last few years and basically go from like being like a pandemic dj who was playing you know i say smaller gigs for the for lack of a better term and now you know he's been playing at print works when that was still open he's been in places like i beef a few times so clearly he's kind of you know his star is really starting to ascend and he's been time to become a real big deal so it's pretty cool to see those pandemic djs are kind of like you know evolving and kind of jumping on i'm, I'm assuming so his next step will probably be to go a bit higher than he is at the moment now and really try to ascend those type of levels and try and get as high up as he can to try and see how far he could take this dj thing and i have a feeling when it comes to patrick mason my internal feeling is that i don't necessarily think he wants to be a dj anyway i honestly do think he wants to kind of be an all-round artist that's what that's my current feeling on him again i could be wrong i don't know the guy i'm talking out my ass i'm in my parents basement my hands covered in flipping cheeto dust and shit piece of boxes on the floor um kids screaming because they got no food wife wanting to run away i'm a nobody but from what I can ascertain online, I get the feeling that he wants to be more than just a DJ behind the booth. He wants to kind of be an entertainer, an all-round star, all this malarkey. So maybe in the next few years, you might see him put out a single. He might start singing. He might start rapping. He might start doing something in terms of being a bit more front-facing. But regardless, really good DJ. I'm a big fan of him. I'm also a big, really, 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 really big fan of Chijana T. I think she's a very underrated DJ in the same way that... um. I'd say a Josie Rebel from the UK is. I think Tijana T and Josie Rebel would actually be a very good back-to-back -back duo. If there ever was a time for me to put on a party and I wanted to put two people to play back-to-back -back all night long, I think I definitely would trust Josie Rebel back-to-back -back with Tijana T to absolutely smash it. So it's a really good lineup. Um, Adil was also on there. I'm not really the biggest fan of Adil, to be completely honest, but still really decent lineup. Labyrinth presents um, Patrick Mason, Adil, Tijana T happening over there at Fold on the 20th. 29th as you can see a bunch of tickets wow man patrick mason well done um a bunch of tickets are really sold out they're on the fourth release of tickets now um fourth release tickets are what pre-entry before 11 30 p.m 25 pounds and then you've got all all um anytime entry sorry i'm assuming between the hours of 11 and 6 or uh, but i think if i'm not mistaken fold last entry is 3 or 4 a.m no actually fold it fold last entry i think it's 3 a.m so if you do get any time entry make sure you go there before 3 a.m because if you go after 3 you will not get in and from what i remember they're very strict about that they're strict about id at fold they're strict about not taking pictures at fold which is i fucking love and they're also strict about if you come after 3 a.m 
You know, if you're at the ticket booth before, after 3 a.m., you're not getting in. It doesn't matter how much you beg. They're really strict about that, which is pretty cool. I might actually go to this. I'm not going to lie. I might actually go to this. So I'm considering actually going to see uh, Patrick Mack because I want to. I've never seen him play live. I'm a big fan of him. I'm a big little fanboy. I used to send him DMs during the during the pandemic, asking about his glasses, about this, about that, and you'd always leave me on red. <laughs> So maybe I can see him and be like, hey, it's me, you know? Be a little stalker. Hey, it's the guy that was asking you about your fucking Bottega Veneta sunglasses. It's me. I'm here right now. It's me, right? Maybe he will take that well. Maybe he won't. Who knows? But I might go see him play at Folds. I'm really looking forward to that one. So that's, that's happening on a Friday. And then there's another event happening on the saturday i think in general right you should always see things with your own eyes and you should always hear things with your own ears so when people say certain things oh this person is crap live that person's album wasn't that great that single was rubbish that music video wasn't that good i'm always a big believer you should see it with your own eyes so Amelie Lenz is one of the most divisive djs within the edm techno adjacent um tiktok techno electronic music dance area i'd, I'd imagine or industry or scene Amelia lens maybe you'd say even maybe some people might put spf dj in there because she's popular or vv or vt or vtss or um charlotte the wit and a few other people right you might all lump them in there it's weird that they're all women but you know we move but i'm really curious to see what Amelia lens is like to put what she's like in real life because i've never seen her in real life and the funny thing was the other day actually i was going through my phone and I happened to find a clip that I screen recorded, I think for someone's Instagram stories during the peak of the pandemic, when all the playgraves were happening, right? And when all the playgraves were happening, one of the biggest playgraves I was on at the time, party promotions, was this collective called uh, Possession. And they were out of Paris, specifically, I'm assuming. And they were doing some really cool parties in some amazing locations all around Paris, like usually around the outskirts, right? In like the kind of hoods. So like in factories, um, outdoors, open air type of stuff. And they would look really sick. They're, and they were big, large scale productions too. It wasn't like they just put some speakers up in the car park. They were going crazy with the lights and shit. It was pretty sick. But unfortunately, you know, the possession started really well and then it fizzled out very quickly um, because I think the founders got done for like some sort of like, you know, being abusive to their partners or something. You know, the, the standard stuff, which is interesting too because in that sort of like LGBTQ queer adjacent scene, they're, they're very much staunchly against having outsiders in their sort of like scene. They want to make a party for them about them. But then the weird thing about it is that they still have the same issues that all the normie raves have. They had the same issues around abuse, the same issues around exploitation, the same issues around harassment, sometimes even even the grapes word. So it's kind of sad that that seems to happen, but I guess it's a natural, no, I guess it's natural. I guess it's a consequence of nightlife. Because, you know, as my parents used to always say, nothing good happens after 9 p.m. And sometimes it's just what it is, isn't it? There's all these freaks outside, weirdos, horrible people. They're just kind of, you know, all mixing together. And no matter what you do, no matter what your door policy is, no matter how much you pick or whatever, no matter how strict you are about the tickets, all this malarkey, you're going to get a cunt or two that's going to slip through the cracks, unfortunately. Anyway, possessions goes down. But during the peak of possessions, they were able to book some pretty sick DJs. And I saw a line, I saw a clip that I screen recorded for someone's Instagram story that featured a melee lens playing at one of the possessions parties. And I was like, rah, I remember this time. And it kind of sounded decent. So I'm not too sure if Amelia Lenz is one of those type of people who, when she has a set that's very commercial, she goes and plays <coughs> commercial music. But if she gets booked by like a smaller party collective, a smaller venue, maybe she goes to a scene that isn't that, you know, bait or whatever, maybe she takes a few more risks. Who knows? So I'm curious to see what she does at Drumshed because I think the gig at Drumshed on the 30th is going to be a mix of like, Obviously, her, her commercial, you know, crowd, um, her normie fan base. But I think it also will be a mix of, like, actual, like, ravers who want to see what she's like, who are as curious as I am to see what she's like to perform in a, you know, in real life. The only issue is that, from what I've been able to see online, Drumshoes as a venue is similar to Printworks. It's kind of soulless. It's really big. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's in the former IKEA building. So you can imagine... 
you know, what IKEA buildings look like. They're usually very, very big, um, very, you know, just wide and empty fucking warehouse spaces where they stock up loads of IKEA furniture. So they don't really make for the best areas to have clubs, especially if you want like an intimate sort of like environment and create sort of like a vibe in there. It doesn't necessarily work the best, but in terms of visuals and sound and shit, that shit's going to travel. It's going to probably sound and look amazing. But I'm really curious to see what Mini Lens is going to be like at XL London, which happening at Drumshed. So, um, this is happening on the 30th of March. We've got the whole fling here. Um, first entry is at 12 and it ends at 12 at sorry at 10 30. The good thing about this is because it ends at it's because it starts at 12 p.m. and ends at 10 30, it means I can also go to a party after, right? On the Saturday. That makes it far more of an appealing sort of situation to go to. And I think the parties after we have booty car happening at fucking fold again so i could go fold twice in one week which is a bit gay but that might be a situation and i can't think of some other ones there might be some other ones listed on there too but the lineup is pretty good the lineup on the 30th you got Emily lens you got someone called Al Ivor. I'm not really too sure who that person is. Aisha, um, Alex, Alex Farrell. I don't really know. Clara Kuv. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with. She's, she's decent. I quite like her. You got back to back with Dax J and SPF DJ. That might be pretty decent. I feel, I feel like Dax J is sort of like fallen off recently as a DJ, but production wise, he's always really there. But then recently, I saw a set of his. I don't know where it was. I'm not sure if it was a boiler room or something. And I was like, shit, he's back to his best. So maybe he had like a little bit of a blip when I listened to a few of his sets. I was like, oh, it's a bit shit. But, you know, maybe he's come back again. So that might be interesting to check out. you got Ellen Allian, the fucking legend. So big up her. you got Fargo. you got Imogen, which I'm a big fan of. Um, she's playing there. you got Koboyo. Someone called Koboyo. Koboyo. Sorry, Koboyo. you got Lokia. you got Milio, Milo Spikers. Um, some um, Nico Moreno. Oh, this would be fucking good. Nova, Ugos, Raven, Theo Nasha, and somebody called VTSSS, um, who's obviously who I know. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I might give this a go. I might give this a go. It's not something that I'd usually go to, and it might be fucking terrible, but I'm really curious to see what Media Lens is like in real life. I'm really curious to see what all the hype is about, and I'm really curious to see, is she as bad as the business techno tag that's been labelled on her? Because I feel like a lot of people kind of put her in the same category as like a Charlotte the Wit, but Charlotte the Wit is really trash. So I don't know if she's just trash as that, or if she's just a DJ that happens to occupy that business techno field, but it's also a really good DJ. There's not a lot of them in that field, but she might be one of them. So I'm going with an open mind and I might have to go there. But the ticket prices, oh God, the ticket prices, the ticket prices are brazy. Last time I checked, I think they were like 50 pounds or something. And I'm like 50 pounds to go raving without a drink, without getting a burger, without some nuts, without some crisps, right? Without some drinks. 50 pounds these guys are bugging out so here's here's the ticket prices right for xl london happening on the 30th of march those open at 12 last entry at 5 p.m which is fucking crazy by the way you got a four hour window to come in four hour window you have to fucking rush in the morning imagine going to a rave at 12 p.m and you have to get there before five absolutely crazy right and obviously they've got the stupid booking fee i'm not sure what the booking fee is fucking for but regardless right so the ticket prices are as follows they've got a general admission ticket price here um third release 42.50 plus four pound 25 booking fee they've got another one fourth release 47.50 plus four pound 75 booking um and then they've got one for pre 1 p.m who the fuck's gonna go there at 1 p.m probably me big up wingers dingus big up wingers mcdingus appreciate you brother Yes, big up Wingus McDingus, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the donation, appreciate you. And big up the chat, big up everybody in there. Big up Dotsky the Flow, I see you. Big up uh, Bo Boronda420, I see you. LB, I see you. Oh, yeah, big up Koyla, my guy, didn't see you there. Wagwan, big up Christopher Burgess, I see you. Wagwan, big up um, Elvo, is it Evo Kazo, uh, Evo Kizo, Evo Kizo, whatever your fucking name is, I appreciate you, thank you for growing, thank you for joining me, and of course I see you, Grown Baby Golf, thank you for joining me too, so, um, obviously, I'm gonna go for the ticket that is the 27.50 pre-entry, because I'm gonna be cheap, but that's still 30 fucking pounds to go and rave, and I have to get there 
So I have to wake up at like 11 or some shit. You know what I mean? I mean it's, it's like I'm going on a flight or something. I have to wake up super early to fucking go get showered, get changed, and then go and see fucking Amelia Lens. And she'll probably only play at fucking 9 p.m. anyway. So I'll be sit, standing around for fucking eight hours waiting for Amelia Lens to play at fucking 9. But regardless, anyway, I'll fucking check it out. So I'm really curious to go see. I'll go check it out. But the price is to go and flipping hang out. At what you call it at um, drum sheds are crazy. There's a there's, there's a ticket price here called drum shed plus. That's ninety two pounds. What the fuck is drum sheds plus? I don't know what that is, but who's paying a hundred pounds to go raving in London? I don't think there's a single club in London that's worthy of a hundred pound ticket price. Not even Fold. Not even my fucking spiritual home Fold is worthy of a hundred tick hundred pound ticket price. I don't care if they had a rave on from like Friday to Monday. It's not worth it. And we should have expected to be paid that much money anyway to go for a party. But regardless, it is what it is. I'm eager to check it out. It's going to be fucking amazing. Um, it should be amazing anyway, especially considering the lineup. Uh, there's a few people on there that I would love to see. Of course, Emily Lenz. Um, of course, Dak J, SPF DJ will be good. Ellen Allian, Imog Imogen will be sick to see. Dicker Moreno will be sick to see. You know, VJ Test may be good to see. So I'm curious to see Wagwan. I'm curious to see wagwan let's see how it plays out let's see how it all flipping plays out but it should be an interesting situation regardless it should be an interesting situation regardless 